Hey, my name is Nick Valesky with the Utah State University Extension Integrated Pest Management Program. Do you ever harvest your sweet corn, peel it back, you're ready to enjoy it, but then you find these gross looking worms all over it? The good news is that they won't hurt you, but let's talk about what they are and what they do to our plants. Corn earworm and tomato fruit worm are both common names for the same species that we're talking about. The corn earworm actually has a wide host range, including a lot of vegetables, fruits, field crops, and many weed species. In Utah, we primarily see it on our sweet corn, tomatoes, and peppers. The adult moth is tannish brown with a 38 millimeter wingspan. The front wings are marked with distinct dark spot in the center and dark bands near the outer margin. The hind wings are lighter tan with a dark band along the outer margins. The male moths have green eyes. Eggs are very small and creamy white and dome shaped with ridges, darkening in color as they near hatching. The larvae is a brown headed caterpillar with green, brown, or black body coloration. Alternating dark and light stripes run lengthwise on the body. Larvae length ranges from 2.5 millimeters up to 38 millimeters when fully grown. The pupa is cylindrical brown and about 25 millimeters long. On corn, the newly hatched larva crawl down the corn silk and into the ear tip. It prefers to feed on the developing kernels in the ear but will also chew on the silks and leaves. On tomato and pepper, it tunnels into the fruits and chews on the leaves. Corn earworms strongly prefer corn to other hosts and damage to corn is much more prevalent. Larvae are cannibalistic and so usually only one is found per corn ear. The larvae feed within the ear for about 10 to 14 days, then exit and drop to the ground. They burrow two to five inches deep into the soil and pupae. In Utah, there are typically three generations of corn earworms each year. The first generation of adults either come from overwintering pupa, which can occur in southern and central Utah, or migrate into northern Utah. Corn earworm moths prefer to lay eggs singly on fresh green corn silk. Each female moth can lay up to 1,000 eggs. Moths will lay eggs on weeds and selected vegetables when corn silk is unavailable. This provides a population that is ready to attack corn as soon as the silks are present. Home gardeners or small farmers can avoid most damage from the earworms by planting early because sweet corn that is harvested before mid-August often will have little or no damage. Later planted corn is likely to have severe earworm damage. Homeowners should consider tolerating damage by simply cutting off the tips of the damaged sweet corn ears. Also consider growing varieties of corn with tight forming husks, making it challenging for the larva to get in. One could also try placing a clothespin where the silk joins the ear. Corn earworm moths can be monitored by using a pheromone lure in a net trap. The pheromone is the sex attractant of the female moth that has been synthetically reproduced and incorporated into a lure. Traps are cone-shaped and usually made of vinyl mesh netting. Place traps by early June along the edge of a cornfield and move it throughout the season to keep it near fresh corn silk. Check twice weekly until the first catch, then check daily for the best results. For commercial growers wanting to use insecticides, use before the larvae enter the ears. Start spraying within two days of the beginning of silking or as indicated by the trap counts. About half of the eggs are laid within two days of silk emergence and the remainder of the eggs are laid about nine days later. Reapply insecticides to keep an active residue on the new silk. Silk grows about half an inch per day. Once silk turns brown, they are no longer attractive as egg laying sites. Here are some product examples for commercial use insecticides labeled for corn earworm control. Biological control. The trichogramma wasp can parasitize corn earworm eggs. These wasps can be purchased from vendors and released into the cornfield. The timing of release and maintenance of adequate wasp populations are critical to the success. Here in Utah, we have found some limited success with these wasps. If you have any more questions about the corn earworm or tomato fruit worm, feel free to contact our integrated pest management program or re reach out to your USU County faculty member.